Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. What's next? In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that can't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's go, uh, where we want to go? Let's go to uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. John chapter 7, verse 14. You got that butt? That scared me too. Sometimes you know what you got to do. It's a trip. It's a trip. I was like, what? It's a trip. Sometimes, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to let the... I'm not going to let these boys know it can happen. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? What you going to do about that? You got to set that tone. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to set that tone. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mama, go! You know? Shut up in town. You know what I mean? I'm trying to know how I go. You know what I'm saying? I let them know. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 14. I'm saying, look at the book. Remember last week, we kind of did a little bit of talking. You know what I'm saying? Let the Most High God, you know what I'm saying, try to speak to us. And, uh, try to understand various parts of the word. We ended off in Deuteronomy, so Most High God willing, we'll, uh, we'll pick up in Deuteronomy and kind of continue on, see what we can figure out. But this is, uh, this is uh, John chapter uh, 7, verse 14. Watch what the book says. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. What do you think, Shanice? Oh, Shanice got a little machine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I'm you know what I'm saying? Oh, my fault. Go ahead. What's I got? What's I got talking? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, get a little excited. <laughs> The, about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. Uh -huh. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right? They said to him, How this man know letters? You know what I'm saying? How he know the scriptures? He ain't never learned. That's crazy. Right? Let's hear about it. Yahushua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He said, the, What I'm teaching is not my teaching, but it's the teaching of the man who sent me. What do you say now? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You do his will, you know. Right? You know what I'm talking about. It all comes down to obedience. As he, soon as you obey, you'll know. Right? You'll know. That thing will light up to you. You look at it. Hey, we don't need to we don't need to spend all our time trying to get too darn deep. The Edomites is the white man. And all this they're trying to figure out, see the Israelites, the the tri the tribe of Jasher is uh is Canada. You know, they let these people tell it. They come up with all this weird stuff they be coming up with. They ain't got time for all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Look, we'll figure it out. You'll know. You'll know. You just obey the man. Wait for it. You'll find out. You'll find out exactly where all the tribes is, exactly where everybody is. You'll know. Just obey the man. We try. We always try to get We try to get to the fun stuff first. I got to deal with that thing at work, too. You know what I'm saying? I'll be, I'll be training people. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get. They always try to get to the fun stuff. Right? Even some, some of the people I work with. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's like, ooh. I want to be over that project, and I want to be over that project. Then they get thrown in there, you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, my God, it's too much. It's too much. It's that nothing. Nobody properly trained me for that. Like, you asked for this. <laughs> right? But it's because they didn't get the basics. You sit down and you learn the basics, stuff that don't seem as fun. Then you'll find out you're well equipped. They dropped me in that department. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn, all. I had to learn on, the, on the job. I had to figure it out. What nobody would teach me nothing. They ain't never got to complain, not nothing. But what that taught me was the basics. So now, 
when the quote unquote fun stuff where it ain't really fun, but it look fun to other people, Man. right? And quote stuff, quote oh, fun stuff come, who they gonna give it to? Man, we need it done, we need it done now. Give it to Philip. How you think the most I got? You think the most I got looking at stuff any differently? Whole time, but he looking at it, I just need a man or a woman that'll do what I need to need done. That's it. I don't want to hear no complaining. I don't want to see no wavering. I just want to see who going to get the job done. And the most I got way better than my job. Because if I don't get the job done, you know what I'm saying, they're going to go, they gonna have to go find somebody else and hire. Most I got, here's the work real quick. Get your butt out the way. You next. He got a whole lineup of people that'll do it. Get your butt out the way. You next. Let's go. Keep it moving. You don't think that's how it works? You look at all our kings. You had, you had two, two houses, right? House of Israel and the house of Judah. All our kings, one after another, failed God, failed God, failed God. He getting their butt out the way. We look at it like, oh, this king just lived and he died. That's how we look at it. Wait, most high God looking at it? Nah, not you. Nah, get your butt out the way. Nah, you ain't going to do it. Gave you a chance. No, this, that, another. He get all the way down. Who he get to? Yahushua. Sure. Soon as Yahushua came onto the scene, he did what he needed. What you ain't see after that no more. No more. You ain't see no more kings after that. I got what I need. What I'm going to see here to get to? Wasting my time, killing time with king. We good. I got the man now. Matter of fact, go ahead and get rid of Israel. But we good. Wipe it. No, that's what I've been waiting for. I've been trying to, I've been about to get at y'all but for a long time. Go ahead and get rid of them now. Scatter them. Send them all over there. This is a nice little place in America for them. I got them. Don't worry about it. Right? That's what he's looking at. Just do the job. That's all we're looking for. In order to do the job, we got to learn. None of us had, never, none of us ever had a job. We just walk on and just start doing it without learning first. You either learned it before you got there or you learned it after you got there. One thing you did, though, is you definitely learned. If you're going to do it right, at least. Otherwise, your butt got fired. Fired. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what we have to look at. It's a job. What do you think it's different? When the man say labor, what do you think it is? What do you think he's talking about? Everybody always trying to make, make sense of some stuff. Stop making sense of it. Just do what the man says. Stop trying to make sense of it. We spend too much time trying to make sense of stuff. What does it mean? When it, just uh, tell me what it means when he say stop lying. I ain't never seen nobody sit there and ponder on that. Hmm. What could it mean? You know what it means. Just keep moving. Next one. That's what we want to look at. We want to look at the commandments. All right? We want to look at what are we supposed to do. All right? If we do what we're supposed to do, then the Most High God, he'll open up our sight. Then we understand the deep stuff. Then we understand Edomites ain't no darn white people. That's like the silliest thing ever. You know That's like saying? worse than anything any Christian ever said. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. People with silly people. That's right? Crazy. We'll understand these secrets, though. We'll understand this stuff. It ain't even a secret. It's but like, we'll, it's we'll, like, we'll understand it's the it's mysteries, it's right? It's certain yeah. thing. The most I got, he hid. Two black people had twins, and one was a white person, and one was a black person. They Make a whole lot of sense. Like, and, not, okay. and, and we're not just talking about one was like of pale skin, and one was of dark skin. That's not what we're saying. One was a white person <laughs> and one was a black person. I'm not that talking about that. That's what they're trying to talk about albino. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're talking about. That happened in Africa two times that a, 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 a couple gave birth to an albino baby and a dark skin baby. Yeah, yeah, I get albino it. baby still got kiki hair. That's still a black child. child. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about you got you a white person that came out of a black person and with another black person. That make a whole lot of sense. A whole lot of sense. Right? What do you think happened? I ain't thinking about what happened. You know what I think happened? <laughs> that Esau is our brother, like the book said. Give me uh give me Deuteronomy chapter uh what do, what do I want? 24? Esau was light skinned. Like my color, probably. And he might not even be that. If you look at the what the book say, it said he had he had ruddy hair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had ruddy, red hair. <laughs> no, it means that the man was hairy and his hair was red. He's a Hebrew. He's a Hebrew. What are you talking about? He came from a Hebrew man. That's all he was. He's a Hebrew. Grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy. I don't know what I want. Uh, it might be 20. We might have to jump around. I, I can't remember. How they twins, Jacob Hebrew, and he not. That don't make Tell no me sense. how 24 start. The Deuteronomy chapter, uh, chapter 24. Give me verse 1. When a man has taken a wife and married her. Give me 23. 
23 verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones. That's 23 verse 1? Yeah. Give me 22 verse 1. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray. That's 22? Give me 21 verse 1. I don't know. I I know when I hear it though. Should be should uh I'm looking for uh not in the camp or don't let them in the camp or they should not uh see the the, the congregation of uh, Yahuwah. Is that what it is? Something about you know what I'm saying not entering into the congregation of Yahuwah. I don't know if that's the first verse, but somewhere in there. Are you serious? If one is found slain in the land. What's that? What's that? The that's Lord 20? Is, yeah, 21. 21? Give me 20. It ain't 20, though. When you go out to battle against the enemies and see horses and Good chariots. Crazy. Give me 19. When the Lord thy God has cut off the nations whose land, thou Keep shalt going. separate three cities. Nah, it ain't 19. Okay, so give me 25. Goodness gracious, that's crazy. Should probably pass that thing. I just think, don't think I'm hearing it. Huh? If there be a controversy between men and they come to judgment. Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. What's that? 27. Keep all the be commandments. No, it ain't 27. We already, took that. we already looked at 26. And it shall be when you are coming to the land which the Lord gives you. This, this. Keep going. And it shall be when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance, and possess it, and dwell therein, that you shall take of the first of the fruit of the earth, Dang, which you shall man. bring of thy land. Good. Who got a phone? I might cheat for him real quick. Uh, fruits of the land. Give me, uh... can cheat, because I gotta go outside. Okay. Sorry. Give me, uh... Look up, uh... Type in, type in the Google or something. Type in like 23. Found it? No, it says probably 23. Give me 23 verse 8. The children uh, that are begotten of them shall enter into the country. This is it. This is it. Give me. All right, sorry. This is it. It's 23. We didn't do 23? Mm, we did verse 1. I think so. Give yeah. me 23 verse 1. What did verse 1 say? He that is wounded in the stones. We did 23, but. Yeah. That's what it started off wounded in the stone? Mm -hmm. I didn't know it started off like that. I wouldn't look for that at all. All right, so this is the this twenty three. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty three. Give me verse uh, seven. Seven. That's what I want. Yep. No, nah, that's too far down. Or that's what I want. That's exactly what you want. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter twenty three, verse seven. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite for he. No, nah, ain't what I want. I want before that. Oh my bad. Okay. Give me uh, give me twenty three, verse three. An Amorite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Uh huh. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Uh huh. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Right, so this is what we read. Remember, we came in the way, the Moabites wasn't messing with us. Right? The Moabites wasn't messing with us, so we went to war. Right, we talked about it. We got, you know what I'm saying? This is so this is all water right here. Right? This is all water. I can't draw worth the darn. You know what I'm saying? But this is this is all water right here, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to put something together. And this is the land. You know what I'm saying? This is Egypt down here, and Israel come up like that, right? Something like that, right? So we came and we came from like let me go ahead and get a different color. We're gonna make this thing artistic. Not autistic, but artistic. You know what I'm saying? You come up this way, this is where we came from. You know what I'm saying? So we camped out right here. Right? So this is all Israel. This is Israel right here. But Israel is divided. So this is Canaan right here, Right? So this is the land of Canaan. This is what the Most High God is promising us. Right? In this area. You know what I'm saying? Right in this area. But, you know what I'm saying? On this area is Moab. You know what I'm saying? And this area is uh, Ammon. Right? So this is Ammon and this is Moab. And then down here is Edom. Right? So Edom down here. So we came past Edom, and then we had to get past the Moabites. Moabites was like, nah. Then not only did they say, nah, they came out against us to fight with us. Right? So now the Most High God is saying, because they did that, they can't come in the congregation. Read it again. Watch it. And I'm a writer of Moabites. A lot of people just feel like the Most High God being mean. It's a reason for everything he do. Everything got a consequence to it. That's what he's trying to teach us. 
Don't be sitting here just running your mouth doing stuff. Everything has a consequence. Watch this. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Uh-huh. Because they met you not with bread with, and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt. Uh-huh. And because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto you. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Because the Lord thy God loved you. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all the days forever. We should never seek their peace, or nor their prosperity. I mean, we never going up to them like, man, all right, let's just let's put it all behind us. And let, I, mean, let's just, I mean, let's just all live together and get along. No. Nah. Our attitude is, that thing been behind us. Y'all stay over there, though. Y'all good. You come over here, we scrap it. No, we ain't holding nothing against you. I'm just letting you know you caught them borders, you enemy. That's it. Right? That's our book. He said, don't ever look for peace with these people. Keep going. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. He said, thou shalt not. So this Edom right here. Right? He said, thou. He just told us the Moabites. He said, on sight. That means the trans. That means the trans. On sight. The kids. On sight. For the Moabites. The oh, Moabites and the Ammonites, you get, as soon as you see them, get them. No, don't ever look for their peace. That book. Right? Now, when it comes to the Edomites, he tells them, Thou shalt not abhor the Edomites. What does abhor mean, brother? Hate. Hate. Don't you ever hate the Edomites. So now, let's fast forward to 2018, where we got a whole bunch of silly people. Silly people teaching us that the Edomites are the white men. Right? The white man, the Edomites are the white men. The Edomites, that's who, let me tell you, that's who put us in slavery. And guess what we should do? We should hate them. They telling us we should never seek the peace of the Edomite. Because the Edomite is the white man. Ain't that what they preach to us? They be like, no, nah, don't ever, you know what I'm saying? Don't try to be like these people. Don't celebrate these people. They ain't, don't, don't do nothing. We should never seek their peace. Did the book say that? No. Who the book say that about? Moab and Ammon. When was the last time you heard them talk to them? If they said it about Moab and Ammon, they got a case. When was the last time you heard them say that about Moab? When, what conversation you ever heard that anybody be like, no, nah, don't, don't mess with Moabites. Go talk to one of these Hebrew Israelites and be like, man, look, if we found the Moabite people, how should we handle them? Bet you ain't going to tell them, man, the Moabites, them is our brothers. They came from Lot. I bet you that'll tell you. Then we ask them about Edom, who they think is the white man. You ask him about him, eat him. Guess what they gonna say about him? Now that's the end. When the book say, don't abhor that. Uh, verse, read it again for me. Verse seven. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Because for he, what? For he is thy brother. Book clearly tell you who our brother is, and tell you don't hate him. Guess what they gonna do? They gonna hate him, and they not gonna call him his brother. And these supposed to be the law keepers. Trap. And the cold thing is, they ain't did no sin. You know why? Because it ain't eat them. <laughs> if it was eat them, they'd be sinning. But they good. They blameless because it, because they got the name wrong. Just a bunch of blundering darn idiots. If you look at it, it's like the book can't be more clear. That should tell you one thing. You gonna put yourself in sin to hate the white man. And the most like God might charge it to them just because they think that's what they doing. Books sit here and tell you, even if, it, even if the white man was Edom, you cut yourself off. Ain't no darn white man. That's crazy. You're our brother. I don't know what's wrong with these people. What were we at before we got to this? Uh, Deuteronomy, the commandments. Grab up. Excuse me. Grab up. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Verse 11. Let's listen to the book. Let's hear some books. Yeah, we can figure out. You got that iPhone? Yeah. Which one is that? Uh, 8 plus. 8 plus. Yeah. <clears throat> it's Deuteronomy chapter 3. Give me, uh, give me verse 11.
For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Remember, the week, the week before last, we talked about the giants a little bit. Right? We talked about how, how, how the, the sons of God, how we, how we proved out through the book that the sons of God were celestial beings. Right? It wasn't no regular people. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no humans. You know what I'm saying? When they call it, when they say a human, you look at a human, how you gonna how you gonna determine a human in the book? What son, they gonna call him? Son of man. They gonna call him a son of man. You know what I'm saying? Because he came from man. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about a son of God, you talk about something that was directly created from God. That's different. You know what I'm saying? He said the sons of God, you know what I'm saying? He uh what happened to him? I don't I don't know. That's what I'm talking about. Football, basketball. Gotta get a little break every now and again. You know what I'm talking about? Nothing. He didn't play anything. Put your foot up. But you, uh, you know what I'm saying? You look at it, and the book is telling us that giants came as a result. Right? So it was giants in the world. And so now the book is letting us know that it was who? Bashan? Uh, all? Bashan. Right? All? He was the last of the giants. He is, he is not the last, but he is of the remnant of the giants. Keep going. Behold, this bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is, it is, uh, it is not in Reba of the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. Is it not in Reba of the children of Ammon? Mm -hmm. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. Mm -hmm. And this land, and the which, cubit, the cubit is like your arm. You know what I'm saying? A man. So it's saying after the cubit of a man, it's like it's after the arm of a man. You know what I'm saying? So you measure that thing out. That's gonna be like anywhere, depending on the man. That's gonna be anywhere between twelve. To 17, 16, 16 inches. You know what I'm saying? He can nine of them things. So he's at least nine feet. Yeah, yeah, at least. At least at nine least. feet. Maybe longer, right? Probably longer. Because this is like a little bit more than a foot. Yeah, it's going to be longer. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with it. You're dealing with somebody. That's a huge person. Let's just give him this. Let's, let's just say it's a flat nine. That's a big old brother. Right? That's a giant. We ain't never seen nothing like that. That boy's still two feet taller than y'all mean. That's you know? crazy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Like to have somebody that's literally twice the height of of people walking around. Like, like, like that's the least of it though. That's, that's the least. Feet like he got to be at least nine feet. Yeah. He he most definitely taller than that. I, right? yeah, I think he's taller than that. No, nah, ain't no thing. Most definitely taller. I'm just saying, just so we can wrap our head around it. Let's just say nine. Let's just call it nine. We definitely. I get to tell you. You know what I'm saying? He 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 ten feet, eleven feet. We can't picture nothing like that. We ain't never seen nothing like that. You know what I'm talking about? You say nine, we can't picture that, but at least we can say, all right, Yao Mean plus a couple. You know what I mean? Like Yao Mean with Kevin Hart standing on him. But you know what I'm saying? You look at him, right? Keep going. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, mm -hmm. after the cubit of a man. Mm -hmm. And this land, which we possessed at that time from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, uh -huh. And half Mount of Gilead and the cities thereof gave I unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites. And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan. Mm -hmm. Sit down, you Sit down. And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half tribe of Manasseh. Uh -huh. All the region of Argob with, the ba with all Bashan, which was called the land of the giants. See? He talking about all this land. So these are the people that we whooped out. Right? He said he gave it to who? Uh, Reuben, Dan. No, Reuben, Gad. He said it right Robert there. Uh, Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the country of Argob unto the coast of the Geshurai and Mekathai and called them after his own name, Bashan, Haveth, Jair, uh -huh. unto this day. And I gave Gilead unto Maker, and unto the Reubenites, and unto the Gadites I gave the Gilead, Gilead even unto the river Arnon, half the valley, and the border even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon. The plain also in Jordan, and the coast thereof, from Chinnereth, Kinnereth, even unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea under hey, Ashdoth, Hizgath, eastward. Mm -hmm. And I commanded you... That time, saying, The Lord your God has given you this land to possess it. You shall pass over armed before your brethren, the children of Israel, all that are meet for the war. Right? So if you're looking at it, we talked about this before too. Our brethren, when we when we got the whooping the Moabites out, our brethren was like, man, it's some good land for cattle, and we got plenty of cattle. Can we stay here? And Moses, remember, Moses got mad. Moses was like, listen, man, y'all don't remember what happened 
when your brothers went up and your fathers went up and came back and brought a bad report and made people scared to go to the war, if y'all stay back over here and don't want to go to war, that's going to make people scared. Y'all remember what happened last time? Everybody died. He's like, you're going to make him mess around bring this evil on us again. And they're like, no, no, no. You misunderstand what we're saying, Moses. We just want to live here. We'll leave our kids and we'll leave our cattle here. But we're going to continue on to the war and we ain't going to rest until we win. Watch what he said. Moses said, I, I can work with that. All right? Keep but going. your wives and your little ones and your cattle, for I know that you have much cattle, uh -huh. shall abide in your cities which I have given you uh -huh. until the Lord has given the given rest unto your brethren as well as unto you and until they also possess the land which the Lord your God has given them beyond Jordan. Uh -huh. And then shall you return every man unto his possession which I have given you. Mm -hmm. And I commanded Joshua at that time saying, Thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done unto the, these two kings. Mm -hmm. So shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms where you pass. Uh -huh. You shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Mm -hmm. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness in thy mighty hand. For mm -hmm. what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to your works and according to your might? Mm -hmm. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. All right, so you remember Moses, Most High God told Moses, you're not going to see the land. All right, or you're not going to go to the land. He said you can see it, but you're not going to go to the land. All right, so Moses was like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what, I'm saying? what you talking about, God? You know what I'm saying? Let's see what we can do. He already told Moses, though. Watch what Most High God say to him. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee. Speak no more unto me of this matter. He said, you better shut up. He said, you better, you better not, you better not, you know how your mom tell you, don't you ask me no more. Moses. You know what I'm saying? You get to ask for something, don't you ask me no more. You never know when she's just going to flip out. So you be like, you know what I'm saying? You be trying to ease that thing in there and be like, Ma, can we, can we go outside? And you know what I'm saying? She kind of ignore you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know she ain't like it, but you know what I'm saying? Let me try to slide another one in there. Ma, Ma can we, uh, can we go outside? You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? She ain't answering. You, you start, start sweating on that third one. You know what I'm saying? Now you start forgetting. You know what I'm saying? You start asking her and she just ignores it. You start forgetting. So you start to kind of be, be more antsy a little bit. Ma, 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 can we go out there? Don't you ask me no more. I told you no. <laughs> you sit there and be like, mm, you know what I'm saying? You know, then you're all sad. That's how Moses was right here. Moses said, you know what I'm saying? He mad. You know, Moses right now, he, re he relaying all the information to the people. Like, this is what all the stuff we've been through. So you can tell he mad. He started off, he was like, Most High God was wroth with me for y'all's sake. You know what I'm saying? He kind of chewing us out. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, Most High God was wroth with me for y'all's sake. You know what I'm saying? How oh, could I go? Man told me, you know what I'm saying? It will suffice thee. You know what I'm saying? Don't bring it up no more. You know what I'm saying? He, he let us know, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, you know what Because of y'all. It was really because of Moses. They ain't, ain't got nothing to do with us. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He let us know. All right? Keep going. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah. And lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. But charge Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. So we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them, that ye may live, and uh -huh. go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. He said, don't add to it, don't diminish aught for it from it. You know what I'm saying? Leave that thing just how you found it. Keep going. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor for all the men that follow Baal Peor. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God has destroyed them from among you. Uh -huh. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, mm -hmm. that ye should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Mm -hmm. For what nation is there so great who has God so near unto them as uh -huh. the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Uh -huh. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? None. No nation. All we got to do is obey it. If we obey it, this is what the people will be saying to us right now. 
All right, we talked about this last week. All right? This is what the people, if we, if we, everything we cling to, everything we hold in high regard, the whole world turn to it and start paying attention to it. All right? Whether negative or positive. You know what I'm saying? Like, what in the world? Like, just imagine. Like, okay, black people really, 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 really liked Obama. How do the whole world feel about Obama? They love the man. You can't, the man can't set foot on any country without being, oh, especially now that Trump is, oh, Obama. Whole world love the man. I don't know why, but. We love something, the world gonna love it. We hate something, the world gonna love it. Kanye started liking Trump. Who do you think drove that push? White people? White people been hated to Kanye. They've been hating Kanye since he said George Bush. He don't, George Bush don't like black people. They've been hating Kanye. Even Democrats are like, oh, I don't know about that. Right? Democrat hated George Bush. But I don't know about that. Now that's a stretch. George Bush loves white people. <laughs> right? Even, you know, even that was a stretch. He stole Taylor Swift thing. Oh, these white people wouldn't mess with after that. Now you done, Kanye. But still, Kanye was still successful after that. Because of black people. Now all... You were a make America great again hat, you're done. Because black people hate you now. You ain't got no protection. We love something, people gonna love it. We hate something, people gonna hate it. Right? So you mean tell me if we didn't if we didn't if we love this word? Right? If we sit here and love this word, you gonna tell me people ain't gonna look at it and be like, man, what law is more righteous than? What God is so nigh to his people? Right? All right. We'll figure it out one day. Let's see. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Uh huh. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest, thy, lest they depart from thy heart in the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Mm hmm. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, mm -hmm. and that they may teach their children. Mm -hmm. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven. He talking about when the Most High God gave us the Ten Commandments. All right, keep going, watch this. With darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. He, he talked heard, to him. What did he say? He heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. He said, you heard the voice of the words, but guess what you didn't see? Any similitude. You didn't see any image. You didn't see nothing. Keep going. Only he heard a voice. He said, you only heard a voice. And what he, else? And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Uh-huh. Even ten commandments, and wrote them upon two tables of stone. So and that's this is where people mess up. He said, he declared unto you his what? His covenant. And he said, even how many commandments? Even ten commandments. So people look at that and they be like, you know what the covenant is? Ten commandments. That's why that's where seven day events go wrong. They look at it and be like, see, to be saved, guess what you got to keep? Ten commandments. That's why they keep the Sabbath. They look at it, okay, let me see. Okay, I got that one. I got that one. Got that one. And the only one that the Christians don't acknowledge is the Sabbath. So the seven day events is as smart as they are. They said, oh, that's where the Christians are going wrong. We need to keep the Sabbath. Then we'll, we can keep all the Ten Commandments. And then if we keep all the Ten Commandments, we say. Because everybody trying to figure out how, you know what I'm saying, like what exactly yeah, do you, you have to do? That. That's always been a confusion for people. Like what exactly do you have to do to be saved? You know what I'm saying? I'm get your it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, okay, I'm saved because I believe, but I mean, I don't have to change my behavior. I think everybody knows that's a lot. So everybody trying to figure out what exactly needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saved, so what goes along with it? So the seven-day Adventists try to figure it out. They're like, okay, keep the Ten Commandments. But this is where we go wrong. It said, keep the covenant, right? And then he said, he gave you Ten Commandments, even Ten Commandments. Watch this. We'll see what else he did. And the Lord commanded me at that time. And the Lord you, commanded me at that time. Talking about Moses, to, right? To teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land where you go over to possess it. So there's a whole lot going on there. You got to keep the covenant. He gave him ten commandments and then told Moses to teach him the rest. Which makes sense because the Most High God was speaking from the top of the mount. And then we told him to stop. We told him, we were like, uh, nah, kick it easy, God. You know what I'm saying? Moses, I tell you what. 
you go hear from them and come bring the rest of the information up. Right? So we look at it. The most I got wasn't done talking. We said, nah, we just don't want to hear it no more. Right? Keep going. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in horror about it amidst of the fire. What's up, man? Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. Uh -huh. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, uh -huh. the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Uh -huh. the likeness he said, hold on, hold on, let's start that thing over. We ain't messing around. We ain't messing around and miss this thing. We ain't done. He ain't messing around and miss this thing. Go ahead and start that thing on over. He said, he said, he said, don't, he said, hold on, just start that thing over for me. We ain't messing around and miss it. I don't want us to miss nothing. What is that, 14, 15, 16? 16. 16. This is verse 16. Unless ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. He said you'll mess around and corrupt yourself and make yourself a graven image. I don't know where I don't know where this is happening at. He said you'll corrupt yourself and make yourself a graven image. Keep going. The similitude of any figure. He said the similitude of, of certain figures. Any figure. Similitude of like religious figures. Got it. Any figure. The similitude of any figure, anything you can darn think of, I don't want you to make a similitude of it. Keep going. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The he likeness. Said, I don't care if it's looking. I'm trying to read that thing off fast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, the likeness of any beast that's on the earth. Right? If it's a beast on the earth, don't make a likeness of it. So you know what these people do? Hebrew Israelites, too. Our brother. They know the truth, don't they? Law keeper. They keep the commandment, don't they? They gonna get a dark shirt with a lion on it. They gonna say tribe of Judah. The lion of Judah. Who's the lion of Judah, brother? Yahushua. What you just do? Turn him into a lion. You a sinner. They gonna ride, they gonna ride the Christian. Take that cross off. They got a big old lion on top of their chest. They yelling at the Christian. Take that cross off. That's idolatry. They got a big old lion sitting on their chest. Okay. I don't know what's wrong with these people. We always talk about the Christian when we get to this part. I get these Hebrews. I'm going to get y'all Hebrews too. Oh, y'all some hypocrites. Just sit down and learn the word. You know what our problem is? We jump out there. We just jump out. As soon as we learn. Are we Hebrews? We read the Ten Commandments and then we jump right on out there. That's all we need to know. We don't know nothing about no law. Nobody go went through and, and, and just and just stuck with the law and just taught us the law. So we we jumping and we making assumptions and we keep moving. Just sit down, learn the book first. After you learn the book, you'll be all right. You'll be all right after you learn it. You just gotta learn it. You obey it. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna learn it until you obey it. So if you learned it, I gotta make the assumption you already obeyed it, right? You'll be all right after that. Keep going. Watch this. He said, of any similitude. He said, and of any beast that's on the what? The likeness of any winged fowl, any beast on the earth uh -huh. that flies in the air. Uh, yeah, the fowl that oh, flies oh. in the air. Okay, so he said, likeness of any beast that's on the earth, and then the likeness of any fowl that flies in the air. Uh oh. The likeness of anything. I got that, right? We already got the dove. You know you know they got that white dove, that beautiful dove, too. They fly that thing out. So if you look at Yahushua, he got baptized and then brought up. And then what descended on him? A dove. The spirit descended on him. And it was like a what? Like a dove. So now when you talk about a dove, if a dove, just a regular old dove descended on him, just fully, he just, get that, you better get away from me, you stupid pigeon. If he, and you know, if that was the okay, case, dove wouldn't mean nothing. You'd be, you know what I'm saying, dove wouldn't mean nothing. Right? You know why they put a picture? They wouldn't be putting no picture in no dove if that was the case. They might tell you a dove is a curse. If, if a dove flew down on Yahushua out there, you got baptized, and he smacked that thing, was like, get away from me. Do you know what these people will be saying? A dove is a curse. Right? They'd be like, a dove is a curse. You don't mess around with no dove. Dove, you have bad, seven years bad luck. Like a crow, you see a crow, you know you see a black crow? Why do you think everybody got that attitude towards the crow? Yeah, the crow went back to and fro on the earth. Right? You see that crow, the crow, the crow ain't positive in the book. So guess what? 
People look at the crow, they be like, oh, no, that's that. You see a crow, that means somebody about to die. Ain't that the superstition they come up? Oh, somebody, that means somebody about to die. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to tell you death coming threes. Why don't y'all shut up? <laughs> I just want you to calculate all the death and divide it by three and see what you come up with. <laughs> that thing better come up with a number divisible by three every time. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They always just come up with stuff. Just stop. Right? But that's what we look at. Right? So you got the dove now. The dove represents the spirit. So now, you put that dove on your wall, you put that dove on that Bible, you just sin. The man just told you, don't make nothing like a fowl in the air that's flying in the air. Don't do it. Keep going. He set us up. All this stuff. He just give us the information first. We got a choice. We ignore it, or we learn it, and we do better. That's it. That's it. Keep going. The likeness of anything that creeps on the ground. Anything that creeps on the ground. Keep going. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Uh-oh. I got that. I got that. I don't know where they got the fish from. Where they get that fish from? They, you know, you know they're going to slap it on the back. Of it. They couldn't wait to get their darn car. Got that car. That bumper ain't even dry yet. They smacked that thing. Up. You know what they're going to put over it? The little guy, the little short kid peeing. You know, so you ever seen the short kid that's peeing on the window? They gonna put that right above the the the, the fish. Now yeah, that make a whole lot of sense. You a sinner? You knew you was a sinner before you even put that thing on there. You put that fish on there. Some people put the fish on the Bible, right? That's a sin. He just told you don't make no fish. Keep going. Yeah, okay. You about to be a fisher or something? You gonna catch something on that darn line? They gonna come back and you ain't gonna get back. Fisher of Leviathan. Unless thou lift up thine eyes uh -huh. unto heaven, and when thou see, he said, "Unless thou, thou thou lift up thine eyes." Look, I love I love Deuteronomy Folk. That thing gets you on every single corner. I don't care who you are. That thing gonna slice your butt every single corner. He said, "Unless thou lift up thine eyes and do what unto heaven, unto heaven, and do what." And when you see the sun, and when you see the sun, and the moon, and the moon, and the stars, and the stars, and even all the hosts of heaven, and all the hosts of heaven, what you gonna do? Should Talk be, about I, I don't really mess with that. Should be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole earth. We got planets. All these planets is named. What do you think they named them? Greek God. Greek what? God. So that means somebody must have been looking up. And they must have been worshiping them. See, somebody, I mean, for them to get those names, somebody had to be looking up and they're like, that's my God. You think he's telling us this stuff for an accident? Whole time he's like trying to let you know, don't look up there and just feel like, listen, watch, watch what he's saying next. Watch this. But the Lord thy God. What he the what did the most high God do with everything that the whole hell host of heaven? Now every everything in the sky, what did he do with it? The Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. He said, I gave that thing, ain't nothing special, but I gave it to everybody. You see here, worshipman, I gave these things to everybody see the same darn sky as you. Why you acting like you see something special? When was the last time you seen the most high God show himself to everybody? Never. You never gonna see it. When it came to us, who saw us? Yisrael, that's it. He brought us out of Egypt, and he showed only us. And then, as a matter of fact, book just shut. I'm lying, because the book just shut. I didn't show you nothing. You heard a voice. And only you heard it. When Yahweh Shua died, he rose back up. How many people see him? Everybody? Mm. Paul even talked about it. He was like, man, he could have showed himself openly, but he showed himself to a few people. Most of our God ain't never been the type of God just want to you know, say, hey, everybody, this is what's going on. When that happened, you know it's over. Oh. At the end, that's what he said. He said, he said, every eye gonna see. That's when you know at the end. And when everybody see, that's over. We talking about everybody looking at the sun. Oh, look at this sun. That's my God. Boy, don't be stupid. Everybody got that. I gave that to everybody. And we still do it. We still look at it. We still look at it and tell, oh, because. The sun and the moon is in this position. When I was born, guess what that makes me? A Sagittarius. You know what that's called? Uh, you got your phone, right? Do me a favor. Look up horoscope. Type in, if you on Google, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what Siri you got. Siri might got some own thing. You know what I'm saying? But type in horoscope 
Wikipedia or just horoscope wiki. You know what I'm saying? I just want to go to the Wikipedia page. Let's just start reading. I don't know, I don't know what we're going to find on here. Let's just see what it say of what a horoscope is. Because we look at horoscope innocent, you know what I'm saying? It's just going to tell you like certain Sagittarius don't, don't get along too good with Geminis. You know what I'm saying? Like they not good mates. You know, so Gemini sometimes they can be two sided. Yeah, so No, you Gemini. <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta be a Gemini because you were born. You know what I'm saying? That's what make you a Gemini. You a Gemini? No, you Gemini. Get that evil up off me. I'll be sliding right up out of that thing. No, not me. You know what I'm saying? Not, ain't you a queen? Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? You got nothing to do with none of that stuff. Hey, look, I don't know. Hey, Put that hex on me. I'm not, no, I'm, my birthday is just June 18th. That's it. I'm telling you, I don't know nothing about that. I'm just like you. I don't know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to do with that thing. You don't know what type of evil you putting on yourself? These people think they playing with us. It's a real thing. It's a real thing these, these people be messing with. These horoscopes. You got it up there? Is Wikipedia.com? Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's just learn. Because sometimes we just need to learn about the world sometimes. Let's just see what a horoscope is. Let's see. So, so, so just, to, hold on, let's, let's get, you, come on over here, so, you know what I'm saying, so I want the mic to hear you, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want the people to be left out of this, you know what I'm saying, so what is it now, it's a, uh, don't get all shy now, you know, it's a astrological chart or diagram representing the positions of the sun, moon, planets, astrological aspects and sensitive angles at the time of an event, such as moment of a person's birth, so it just told you exactly what the most high God said, he said, don't you look up at the sun, the moon, the stars. Hold on, we ain't done yet. The stars or all the hosts of heaven, right, to worship it. Then it just tells you how it is. The sun, the moons, the stars, and all, all the skies and all the aspects of it that determines an event, you know what I'm saying, such as a person's birth. Okay, keep going. Wow. The you read it already, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Watch this. The word hor horoscope is... What, what the word horoscope mean? Hor the word uh, horoscope derived from Greek words hora and... Scopus meaning time and observer. <laughs> observer at times. The word horse, the whole time we've been talking, oh, I just need to read my horoscope. I want my horse. whole time we've been telling ourselves we observers of time. <laughs> Grab Leviticus for me. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 23. <laughs> this is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 23. You know what? These the Christians will argue with you too. I had to bust one of their darn butts. Horoscope is not a sin. It is not a sin. The but I am not worshiping the sky. God, but I take him right there and be like, he already told you don't look up and worship. I am not worshiping the sky by saying I'm like Gemini. No, okay, you're right. You're not worshiping. Go ahead and look it up. Go ahead and figure out what the word means. Now they look it up. Okay, I observe time. I observe time when I look at my watch. All right. This is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 23. You keep looking at your watch, man. Time about to be up for your darn butt. Remember that Chris Rock thing? He might have been on the song. Oh, this is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 23. You gotta say it, That's all. Go find it, son. Goodbye. Pick this up. 24 might be one of them. And when ye shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall Give me count. 24. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof Give shall be. Give me 25. Eaten. And in the fifth year, ye shall eat the fruit. You shall eat the fruit thereof. Give me 26. Okay. You shall not eat anything with the blood. You shall not round the corner of your heads, neither shall you mar the corner of your beards. You shall not make any cuttings of your flesh for the dead. What are you looking for? 26? Okay. okay. This, is, uh, this is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26. You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment, nor observe times. Nor do what? Observe <laughs> times. We did now. We just talked about what observing time means. That, I'm not talking about looking at your darn watch. When he say observe time, he's not talking about looking at your watch. He used to look at Wikipedia. That's their story of what observing time was. The ancient Greeks, you know what they call it? Horoscopus, or whatever they said. Right? Time observer. And what is that? Oh, that's when you look at the sun and the moon 
and all the stars up there and the aspects of where they are and determine an event such as somebody's birth. I don't believe in that sort of team. Astronomy is one of the many tools of the devil. <laughs> Might have been on the side. <laughs> Water boy. <laughs> Might have been on the side. <laughs> right? We look at these things and the whole world presents us this stuff as if it's innocent. Like it's cool. Like we just rocking with it. You know me. I ain't about to walk around telling nobody it's a sin just because I don't like it. Right? I don't even tell people they sinning because they celebrate Christmas. Let's be clear. I'm just going to tell you, you might be at risk of bowing down to something you don't know you're bowing down to. As soon as you put that star on top of that thing, that when you, like you change the game at that point. You get to put in the, what, what you going to do when you put an angel at the top of your tree? I mean, that's a nice godly figure, right? What you do though? That's an image. And then guess what you're going to do every time you put a present? Bow down to that thing. I mean, you you don't think you're doing it. How the Most High God going to see it? Are you going to, when the Most High God stands up, he's like, did you bow down to anything and just start playing back your life? And you start, ooh, that's, a, that's an idol on top of that tree because I put an angel up there and that's an image. And then mm, I just put seven presents down there. I bow down to it seven times. How, you, how confident are you going to be when you say to God, no. Nah. Well, the guy's going to look at you like, mm, I don't know what he's going to do. I'm just saying, like, if I was a lawyer, I could make a case. You bow down. I said what I'm saying. I don't know what the most high God's going to do about that. I'm just saying, if I was a lawyer, I could make a case. But I don't even, you see, I don't go as far. When it comes to horoscope, you're a sinner. When it comes to Christian, I'm going to say, you might want to relax. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely tradition. You should stay away from it. When it comes to horoscopes, no, you're a sinner. That's it. That's it. I mean, you sitting there running your mouth. Sagittarius, the old sad season. All that, uh-huh. You just sinned all season. <laughs> right? Don't even realize it because we ain't been taught nothing. Where we get this stuff from? It's crazy. People, most people get tattoos when they sign so. What you going to do about that? Like, scrape that thing. You know what I'm saying? Get that thing up off. Right? Keep going. Let's see what we got. Uh, grab my fault. Back to Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy chapter uh, chapter four. I don't know where we at. Verse nineteen. Nineteen. It's Deuteronomy chapter four, verse nineteen. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and uh -huh. when thou see the sun and the moon and the stars, uh -huh. even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole earth. Every time you read your darn her horoscope, you serve them. Keep going. Wait, what did I say? Verse 20. Oh, under the whole heaven, sorry. But... The Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day. Uh huh. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swear that I should not go over Jordan mm -hmm. and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. You see, Moses tight about that thing. He mad. You know what I'm saying? Moses, you know what I'm saying? Moses, God swore to me. You know what I'm saying? I can't even go over there for y'all's sake. All right, keep going. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan. But ye shall go over and possess that good land. Mm -hmm. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, mm -hmm. which he made with you, and make you a graven image, mm -hmm. or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Mm -hmm. when, thou, when thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, mm -hmm. and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Y'all got to make sure y'all understand what's happening right now, right? So remember, we've been doing a lot of traveling, 40 years worth of traveling. We coming up the rear right here, right? So we looking at this is the land right here, Canaan. This is the land that we supposed to be getting. Most High God promised this land to us. So we coming up, we about to take this land. But we know we got to go through Edom to do it. 
Edom like, nah, you can't go through us, so we have to go around. Then we go, we get to Moab, and we're like, and Moab not only said you can't go to Moab came against us and tried to scrap. So then we we fought with them, we took their land. So now we came up this way, right? It's a river right here called Jordan. You know what I'm saying? So now we at the Jordan. We know that as soon as we go across, it's game time. It's all what we, we got to do all a whole bunch of fighting to get over here. So now we give them one last rah rah speech, right? To all the people, there's a whole bunch of people that died out, a bunch of people that was kids when we started. He trying to make sure everybody has the whole information. Let me teach y'all the law. Let me make sure y'all know what we're here for. Let me make sure everything is solid. So he going back and he's retelling all this stuff. Getting them ready because we about to go to war. And we about to fight and we about to go some heavy stuff, right? So that's what's happening. He kind of recanting everything. And he's letting them know how important and stressing how, 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 how crucial this is. And he's letting them know. First of all, I already know y'all butts about to go over here and start sinning. Read this again. Like, look, read it from that point of view. We about to go. I got to encourage all the people. Rah, rah, rah. Then watch what the man say. Read that one more time for me. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. He said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you. That ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. Now, it doesn't. So, if we go to the U.S. troops in America. And we about to go to war in Iraq. Right? You, you military, right? Is, is anything in that speech, the rah -rah, is there a rah rah speech before, you know what I'm saying, before they go, you know what I'm saying, like go get some business, you know what I'm saying, go into a mission or something? Sometimes. Sometimes a rah rah speech. So if you got a mission where it's a rah rah speech, at any time in that speech, is it going to be anything like, all right, I know real soon we're going to all go over there and die? That's counterproductive. What I'm going to tell you we're going to lose for? But listen to Moses. This is Rah Rah Speed. This is Moses trying to get everybody encouraged and amped up. Watch it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day uh -huh. that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. Before we even get here, let me tell y'all go. We're going to get it and y'all going to soon perish from it. Y'all going to get it and then lose it. That's what he told us before we even got in there. Watch it. Keep going. Let's hear why. You shall not prolong your days upon it, but uh -huh. shall utterly be destroyed. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Uh-huh. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen. Uh-huh. Whether the Lord... He ain't talking about our time right now? Absolutely. Let's see when he said. Let's see. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Yeah, you you all never seen the Jesus piece, the wooden Jesus piece that people be wearing? Because they can't afford the, the silver one or the gold one? Right? He said wood and stone. Right? Serving God. And he said they can't see, they can't smell, they can't eat. Keep going, watch this. Or here. But if from there you shall seek the Lord your God, uh -huh. you shall find him. And when? If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. But when? When thou art in tribulation. Uh -huh. And all these things are come upon you. When? Even in the latter days. If thou turn unto the Lord thy God and shall be obedient to his voice. Moses, from the very beginning, Moses was like, I already know how this thing going to end. We about to go over here. We about to get the land. Y'all ain't going to last long, though. In the latter day, y'all y'all, y'all, going to be scattered. And when y'all get scattered, all y'all got to do is obey the most I got to remember. From the very beginning, Moses knew how it was going to play out. Keep going. Watch this. This chapter 4 of Deuteronomy, he already knew what was happening. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. Uh huh. For ask now of the days that are past, uh -huh. which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth. He said, ask around, y'all. Tell me if this has ever happened. Watch this. God, uh, from the day that God created man upon the earth and asked from the one side of heaven unto the other mm -hmm. whether there has been any such thing as this great thing or has been heard like it. Uh -huh. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as you heard and has lived? Has anybody ever heard the voice of God speaking out of the midst of fire like we heard? And lived. And lived. Right? He asked a question. He said, when does this ever happen? That's the that's the prosperity. That's the that's the uniqueness of our people. That's what that's what Paul was. So grab a hope we got. We gonna come right back. Grab Romans chapter three verse one. This is what Paul was talking about. 
He said, has anybody ever heard the voice of the Most High God speak from the fire and live? Somebody might have heard it. They ain't tell nobody about it. They but was out of it. Has it happened and they live? We did. We didn't just live. We became one of the greatest people. And the most I got tore our bus down, just like Moses said would happen. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? He said, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of the circumcision? In other words, Jew. Much every way. He said, much in every way. Chiefly why? Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The voice of the Most High God came to us. Right? This is what Paul was talking about. He's like, that thing ain't never happened to nobody else. Because Paul knew the law. He knew that Moses asked, what? Just search around. Look from east side of the heaven. Ask around. You tell me when something like this has ever happened. Let's get back to Deuteronomy. He said, just let me know when this has ever happened. When you ever had the most high God speak from a mountain out of the fire. And y'all hear him. And everybody live. Y'all live to tell about it. Y'all live to write it down, put it in the book. To spread this message around. When has it ever happened? When has there ever been a book this solid? Give me something. Anything they got, they're going to have to try to tie it into this. The Book of Mormon. You got to tie it in. You gonna have to. What book gonna be solid if you can't tie it into this, right? The Quran. You gotta try to tie into this. Talmud. Talmud. What well, a Talmud. You know what I'm saying? That tie into too, right? You look at these things. It gotta tie in any book that you think gonna be solid. Gonna have to tie into this. You ain't gonna have no standalone book. The Deuteronomy. Where we leave off. Chapter 4, verse 33. It's Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 33. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Uh-huh. Or has God a say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptation? We say say, it's like, has God ever even thought about taking a different nation? Right? Just this one. Just ours. Keep going. By temptations, by signs, by wonders, and by war, and by mighty hand and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Don't tell them. Don't let these people tell you that being an Israelite don't mean nothing. That's crazy. Books in here tell you. Has the most I got ever even thought about getting another nation? In the New Testament, Paul tells you, chiefly in every way, or much in every way, chiefly because we were given the oracles of God. The question was asked, what advantage is it of the Jew. To be a Jew, what advantage does that person have? He says, much in every way. He said, there's plenty of advantages, in other words. He said, let me give you one. This is the, this, this the highest one. The word of God was given him. So that means there's a whole bunch of advantages. I'm just trying to share one with you. I'm just sharing you the best. Right? Don't let these people tell you there ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never going to read it in the book where it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? That thing means something. Now, if you're not, don't get it wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're not an Israelite. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it wrong. That don't, that don't mean that you're done. You know what I'm saying? It just means that you ain't got the advantage. That's it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know what I'm saying? People win without advantages. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? When you run and race it, you know what I'm saying? You run like on a track and field and stuff. You run and you, you got to qualify. And then based off of your time, that's how you place. You know what I'm saying? Like the big race. You know what I'm saying? And in certain lanes, you know what I'm saying, to have an advantage over other lanes. You know what I'm saying? Just because of the position and where you got to go and how many people going to be in the way and blocking the wind and all that stuff. So there's certain lanes, especially in the middle, they got advantage over other, other lanes. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Are you trying to tell me the person in the middle always win? No. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I just run, I'm just running fat. I just wanted more than you. Right? Something happened. You know what I'm saying? Just because I got the advantage don't mean I'm going to win. Same thing for us. Just because we got the advantage, we go to hell right before these people. They'd be able to look at us, go to hell. Then the advantage become there. Right? So if you're not an Israelite, that thing don't mean nothing. The most high God got his hand out to the whole world. He looking at the whole world. He just looking for who gonna obey. Israelites don't obey, get y'all butts out the way. I'll take a Gentile. You lost you, don't lose your darn mind, get to thinking oh, it's just us or nobody. That's crazy. You lost your darn mind talking like that. Your butt get it faster than anybody else. 
You got the advantage when it comes to winning. You got the advantage when it comes to losing, too. Mm-hmm. Don't make no darn mistake. Plenty of examples in the book where the Gentiles had favor. Heck yeah. He said, Y'all sure said, you know what I'm saying? A lot of Elisha ain't go to nobody in Israel but to a woman in what? Syria? Sidon. Sidon. I believe. I might, yeah, might yeah, be yeah. Sidon. Sidon. Yeah, Ryan? Sidon. Even you look at Jonah. Jonah was trying to get out of Dodge because Jonah knew from the get go he is a merciful God. I'll mess around and go tell these, these sinning Gentiles, these dirty sinning Gentiles, I'll mess around telling the guy you about to kill him. And you know what they'll mess around and do? Repent. I ain't telling them nothing. I'm about to hop on this good old boat. He's trying to go the other direction, the opposite direction. Yeah. You know, that boat starts rocking a little bit. All them, all them people start freaking out like, oh, everybody pray to their God. Jonah said, don't worry about it. Just talk to me. Don't already knew. God called up to him. We good. Just toss me over. Don't, don't pray to your fake guy, man. It's okay. Yeah, you know what I'm Don't kill no time. Just go ahead and toss me over. Hey, toss Jonah Butt over there. They probably didn't believe him at first. You can imagine, like, we're going to toss you over because that's what you're talking about. But, you know what I'm saying? You crazy. They toss his butt over. Everything got calm. They're just there, like, mm mm-hmm. He's telling the truth. Real. I mean, he's telling the truth. Oh, and they start, and they start looking, at they, looking at his guy. They look like his guy is for real. They start reaching out, touching. His guy reached out and touched something when he wanted something to happen. Yeah, Threw Jonah it. over, well darn, swallowed his butt up, the fish, darn, swallowed his butt up. You know what I'm saying? And you look at it, it was just protect him. Now just look at that. Most I got, Jonah thought he was getting out the way. Most I got said, nope. I'll keep you in a well, make you suffer down there until your butt get up and want to do what I want to do. And you want to, and you want to look at that? That's grace. Because you know what the most I got could have did? Kill him. Get your butt out the way. I got somebody else to do it. That's grace. Nebuchadnezzar saw. He said, yo God, real. Daniel you God, whoever the worship there you got. Oh, they getting, they getting burned with fire. Nebuchadnezzar saw that thing. He humbled Nebuchadnezzar. Made Nebuchadnezzar eat grass like a darn animal. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar got up. He looked at the most I got. He said, I got that. You showed me that. that that's grace. You don't think these Gentiles can get in? You lost your darn mind. These Gentiles are walking there right before your butt. Look at you and be like, oh, no, nah, that's enough. Most I got shut the door. It's a line. Everybody trying to get in. Most I got shut that door, shut the door right after the Gentile. Gentile look back, smile at you, and keep moving. They be like, no, nah, not you. You know what I'm saying? Turn your butt around. You know what I'm saying? It be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. What's wrong with us? I don't know what's wrong with our people just sitting here thinking that these Gentiles, y'all done lost y'all darn mind. You ain't going to find no book to say it. Isaiah tell them. Whole book tell you that Gentiles getting in. From the law all the way to uh, Revelations, it's telling you Gentiles getting in. I don't know where these folk get this stuff from. Matter of fact, they got to be as slick as they can. They're going to try to reinterpret. Actually, Gentile don't mean Gentile. Yeah, okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Tired of these smart Hebrews, bro. They, we, they, they too smart for their own good. I be looking like, yeah, man, got a dude that wanna. He still wanna. He still wanna uh, debate me over. Uh, hey, hey, get your butt away from there. Go over there and sit down. He still wanna debate me over talking about it's a sin unless you you sell everything you got and go preach. I'm like, first of all, book already told you that not everybody is called to be a preacher. Now you already going against the book. What's wrong with these people? Like, just relax. Yeah, they read this one little piece of they they get something and they feel like they got a revelation. They get that and be like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, he told, the, he told the young man to sell everything he got. And the young man couldn't do it. He look at that. He just, that's the only book, part of the book he read. I ain't going to do that to him, though. No. This is his brother. He actually a little knowledgeable, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? You, know, you look at that stuff and you just wall out. So you start shaping everything off of one verse. Can't do that. Can't do that. Keep going. What, what's it got? Unto thee it will show that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. Uh-huh. There is none else beside him. Uh-huh. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. Mm-hmm. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardst his words out of the midst of the fire. All right, me- we good. Okay. All right, so we're going to start off. Uh, this is what we get, chapter 5? Uh, we ain't at 5 yet, but we stopped at 36. Verse 36. How much we got left? Uh, well, just, let's just finish off 4. And we'll start off. Well, we probably won't read five. Five is like the Ten Commandments. We'll touch on five a little bit. Then we'll go to six. Um, 
But let's let's finish off four and then we end for tonight. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in the sight with his mighty power out of Egypt mm -hmm. to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art to bring thee in to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Uh -huh. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Lord he is God in heaven above and upon earth beneath. Mm -hmm. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day mm -hmm. that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Mm -hmm. then, then Moses served three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. Mm. Severed, sorry. Then Moses severed three severed cities mm. on the side Jordan toward In the other sun words, rising. He, he on this side of Jordan, so Jordan, Jordan like right here. So like on this side of the Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Remember, we coming up this way. So it's saying on this side of the Jordan, he severed three separate cities. So he just made three cities. And let's see what these three cities for. We're going to talk about it. That the slayer might flee thither which should kill his neighbor unawares and hated him not in, the, in times past, and that fleeing unto one of these cities he might live. All right, it's for, it's for when a man accidentally kills somebody, all right? And you have like a relative of that person that got killed that want that vengeance. He looking like, I'm going to kill this boy. He accidentally killed my sister. I'm going to kill this boy. He don't think it was an accident. He like, I'm going to kill this boy. So we got cities where a person in that scenario could go to and be protected. Until there was a trial, and then we figured out if the person deserved death or was it truly an accident. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that and how that tie in and everything. Go ahead and finish out this chapter. Namely, Bezer in the wilderness in the plain country of the Reubenites, uh -huh. and Ramoth in Gilead of the Gadites, and Golan and Bashan of the Manassites. All right, so you had one for each tribe that was out there. Half of Manasseh was on this side. You had the Reubenites, Reubenites that was on this side. He also had the Gadites on the other side. So that's all our brothers. That's three of our tribes. All right? Keep going. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments with Mo which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. On this side, Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote after they were come forth out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they possessed his land in the land of king, Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. Mm -hmm. From a rower, which is uh, by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto, the, unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. Mm -hmm. And all the plain of this side, Jordan, eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, under the springs of Pisgah. All right. So you look at it, you're trying to give us a location, trying to give us the geography so we can see where they are. All right. That's how we can kind of kind of estimate based off of my little terrible picture of where we are. All right. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at next week. Uh, more into the commandments, right? The whole book of Deuteronomy is just kind of recanting everything that kind of went down and trying to condense it so that the people are prepared. They're able to go into it. You can tell, you can look at the tone, you can tell Moses freaking out. Moses looking like, man, I'm, I ain't gonna be able to go over there with y'all. Y'all, please keep it together. I already know y'all butts gonna mess up. This is what's gonna happen to you when you mess up. But please keep it together, right? So he just kind of like, listen, look. And make sure y'all get it before they go down, right? Because he know once you get over there, he can't go. He got to leave it in the hands of Joshua. You see, he told Joshua, look, Josh, you just saw, right? You just saw we took down these kings. The same thing that happened to any king you run across, right? Joshua believed it, though. We're going to get to this book, too. This book next, right? We're going to get all the way through the book, Joshua right? We almost done with the law, right? And you know what I'm saying? Who going to sit here and teach the law? We won't teach the people exactly what the Most High God was talking about. Exactly why we need this law. Why this law is important for us. Why it's our heritage. And really talk about it. Not just, you know what I'm saying, well, you're not supposed to eat pork. You know what I'm saying? Talk about it, man. Let's talk about the law. Alright? Any questions? Let's go ahead and pray out.